Welcome to Dwarf Fortress and welcome to the channel I am Twisted Logic. I'm going to be creating a combat focused solo dwarf adventurer and going on an adventure. If you're watching this later on this is a beta version of the adventure mode so things are subject to change. I'm going to go with normal difficulty. The difficulty here only affects the starting skill points that you get but I want to focus personally on normal. So onward to character creation. <laughs> We're in Great Britain and, oh, and Ireland. Okay, so I'm going to pick a dwarf um, because that is what I want to create. We're going to go with the craft of fortresses. Um, I haven't played this map at all. I don't, I don't have any fortresses on this map. Okay, so I hit randomize once and we're from Kismet. It doesn't matter to me where I start here in this civilization, but what does matter is the beliefs for me. We're going to go with a belief in Anir, the goddess of speech, persuasion, poetry, song, revelry, music, festivals, and jewels. And I'm going to change the dwarf name as well. Um, so Shem, we're going to change this to Urist. Right up here, Urist. And then I'm going to clear these names, okay? And then in here, in the search, I click it here, but it's blinking here. And I'm going to type in Twist. Okay. Urist of Twisting. Done. Urist Gim. Urist of Twisting. Urist is dagger in Dwarven, so this is the dagger of twisting. <laughs> so our home is Kismuth. Um, occupation here, I want to change this to... Hunter or Ranger? I, I'm thinking Ranger because I think I get dodge. I'm not entirely sure, to be honest with you. But I'm going with Ranger because I know I get dodge with that. So accept the background. So if we look over here, we're already a novice Marks Dwarf, a competent ambusher, and a novice dodger without spending any points. I'm not going to be ranged, so that doesn't matter too much. Uh, what I am going to do is pick one point into Axe Dwarf, and then one point in Observer and Swimmer. Come down here a little bit. Shield User. We're going to put many points into Shield User. Skilled Shield User. Skilled or competent, either one is fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put one more point into Dodger and one more point into Wrestler. And now I have zero remaining. So if we look at our skills now, Novice, Marks Dwarf, Novice, Axe Dwarf, Novice Observer, Novice Swimmer, Competent Ambusher, Competent Shield User, Competent Armor User, Adequate Dodger, Adequate Wrestler, Novice Striker, Competent Thrower, and Novice Miscellaneous Object User. With shield user and armor user, these are very important. So you can have a piece of armor on, right? If your armor skill is not high enough, you can get hit in that armor and get bruised through it. If your armor user level is high enough, you'll get hit and it'll glance off. So just as an example. And then over here on our points, I want to put one point into each of these. And then down here... Uh, get rid of empathy one so minus one point of empathy that brings us up to six what's below average empathy um, same with music and also kinesthetic sense so these two are going to be good for combat um, average recuperation is going to give us you know a little bit better healing than normal high endurance is going to be the most important combat stat because when you get tired you stop fighting <laughs> and average toughness, average agility, average strength. Those are all great. And then we can still read with the linguistic ability, I believe. Right? Analytic ability. I'm pretty sure it's linguistic ability is reading. Except attributes and skills. Okay, appearance here doesn't really matter too much. Uh, I like his hair. <laughs> his medium length beard is braided. His hair is goldenrod, his skin is copper. Except that. The background here doesn't really matter at all. I just randomized until I got uh, only moderate needs. Um, be with friends and family you can never 
you can never satisfy. Practice a skill you can satisfy. Acquire an object you can. Admire art we can also satisfy. And then um, we could just change, change the goal here as well. Dreams of mastering a skill. Okay, except personality. So copper battle axe is great. Uh, we're not gonna leave, we're gonna leave that alone. We're gonna go down to body wear. Okay, and we're gonna get rid of this leather dress. And we're gonna get a tunic. Yeah, turkey leather tunic right here. Same amount of points, so it doesn't matter. Um, and then scroll back up here, and I want a copper mail shirt and a copper breastplate. Copper helmet. You see the graphic up here after I added the copper helmet? Changed. I'm gonna remove that and re add the same copper helmet. And now we have a different graphic. I believe it's only those two at this point right now. And then the color is based on the material. So I like this helmet better. We're going to take a Wolverine leather hood. <laughs> Wolverines! Um, Handwear, we're going to take uh, copper gauntlets. Two of them. In footwear, we're going to clear out the shoes. So minus both shoes. And then footwear, copper high boots. Legwear, copper greaves. And we already have leather trousers. And now the shield, we're going to remove that copper buckler. Best shield we can afford, which is probably bismuth bronze. This food right here, I'm going to drop it down. So one piece of food. Meat right here. All the way to the bottom of the list. And now we have prepared stuff uh, for two points each. And I'm just going to grab a couple random things here, but one of each. Depending on your starting civilization, you may get like a little pouch. I think that's under tools. Um, but I'm not really sure. We can do an adventure mode dwarven shotgun. <laughs> it is possible. Uh, but we're not going to try that now. Honey badger bone goblet. One. Okay. So drinks right here. Take uh, maybe one or two of each. Yeah, two of each, I think. And right now we have 63 points remaining. Now that we have, like, a lot of that stuff set, we're going to get rid of the Copper Battle Axe. We're going to go with the Bismuth Bronze Battle Axe right there. Excellent. Very excellent. And we have 20 points left. And so what I like to do with the remaining points is come down to Tools here. And in this search bar, I'm going to search for Dice. So Lead is, like, the best dice to grab, I think. Um, but instead, we'll just grab nickel. Yeah, just fill up with nickel dice right here. It's great to have things to throw, and these are just little pieces of metal we just toss at pretty quick speed, too. We can fracture bones with these. We can explode somebody's face if we hit them right. So I think that's good, except equipment. We're not taking a party member. We're ready to adventure. Arist Gim. Let's go. You finally got your equipment together, such as it is. Now it is time for action, for adventure. In the rush of excitement, you've forgotten where you're going and why. Perhaps some of your friends here can remind you. Okay, this is our equipment right here. So our, open our inventory, right? So the bismuth bronze battle axe is in our right hand. We're wearing all this equipment. The shield is also in our right hand, and our dwarven rum and ale and stuff is in our right hand. Uh, leather backpacks on our back, and if you look, that this is kind of indented. These letters here, this is all—all all these indents are stuff that's in the bag, okay? And then you see that this water is indented further at the water skin, which means it's in the water skin. First, we're gonna drink this water right away. Back to our bag. This hand icon right here. Drop the item, but we're gonna do it on the water. So we're going to pour the water on the ground. And then we're going to come down again to the L. Um, the treasure chest with the arrow. Put this into a container. And we're going to put it into the goblet. And we're just going to get rid of this stuff out of our hands, but not throw it away. So we're just going to put it into containers. Okay, excellent. Um, this button right here. You have a weapon drawn. Click to strap it. Click it again here. 
and then read this up here. You don't have a free grasp for your bismuth bronze shield. So let's see what's going on with our left hand. See the goblets in our right hand here. So we're going to put that into our bag. Strap and unstrap. Excellent. So now the battle axe is in the right hand and the shield is on our left hand. And we're going to use the arrow keys to move. And we're going to try to leave this building through the door right here. Excellent. Very excellent. Sometimes you got to click this through. And just get away from those people that are talking. Because um, they're just going to constantly pause our game. If I hold down control and mouse wheel in, it gets a little bit bigger. We can see a little bit better. Uh, we can also use the regular bracket keys to zoom in and out. Um, so we can just kind of adjust things how we want, and then when we move, it recenters us. These lines underneath us, right here, the down arrows there, um, they designate that we're laying down or standing up. And you can adjust that with the S key. And there's also this right here. We're standing up or laying down, and it toggles it. Select your combat preferences. My default attack is strike without charging or wrestling. And then dodge preference here. Stand your ground. Charge preference. Stand your ground. Done. Draw the bismuth bronze axe with your right hand. Draw the shield with your left hand, but the graphic didn't change here. Okay, and I'm just using the arrow keys to move kind of away from this settlement towards the north. What we can do is move over top of this cabinet and then right click and then see what's in here. Um, so we can get this hood. We can grab any of the stuff here. Okay, we're just headed north looking for uh, some animals to kill. <laughs> so if we click this map, the travel button right here, T. Um, we can sometimes, most of the time, move on this map like this. It's kind of like a fast travel. And then we can also click on this map again, and then we kind of get the overview area. We can fast travel within the colored area here. Um, and then this is outside of our range, kind of. But we could move over there. Um, it also kind of gives us um, some information here, right? So this mountain is home of the giantess. Linge, Fim Sports. <laughs> um, there's another cave right there. This is Cyclops Cave right there. Over here is a another Cyclops Cave. Um, we can't cross the river through the fast travel unless there's a bridge, which there's there is one right like right here. Um, it's it is hard to see um, on my 4K display here, but we're gonna go back into the game and then just walk down to the south to the river here. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to turn off these triangles here. So settings. Game. Slightly up from the bottom. Show up, down arrows on ramps. No. Done. Um, I can not fast travel into the mountains here. They're kind of like a boundary. And if I walk into those mountains, then I have to walk out before I can fast travel again. So I'm just going to kind of avoid them a little bit bunch of humans, but let's see what they have in the bags here. Iron short sword. We're going to grab it. Pick up the iron short sword in our right hand. Okay, what else they got? I get this carbachon. We're going to grab that carbachon as well. And then we're leaving. <laughs> They don't do anything or care. Oh, here we go. We got two horses right here. Okay. I mean, these could be somebody's horses. I'm not really sure. Um, but we're going to combat, confirm... Strike. Left rear leg. Easy strike. Can't quite connect. Quick. We're gonna hack it. 
and then this one right here we're just going to switch over to this one confirm strike uh, left front leg gotcha okay now this horse right here has a wall behind it with a ramp right and he's right there I'm going to go into the bag all the way to the bottom of the bag and our dice right here nickel cube die we're gonna hit these three dots and throw the nickel cube die and then move the square right on top of them enter and A for lethal the spinning nickel cube die strikes the stray muscular horse in the right rear leg fracturing the bone so hopefully it's a little harder for that horse to get away from us we're also going to switch this to a I guess a sprint yeah we'll switch it to a sprint and then see if we can catch up with this horse right here I don't know if we can we're, tra we're tracking him oh yeah, yeah, yeah we're kind of close in this situation right here if I throw the die and miss for whatever reason it's going to go off over that way and I'm gonna have to look for it if I want it back the other die is still up there where it where it hit the horse um, but when I threw that one there is blood over there so I know where it is excellent we got close to it we're gonna combat again strike left front leg can't quite connect Upper body, easy, very square. So we'll get an upper body shot. And what we're going to do is charge attack. So move towards your opponent. Right like that. And then we're going to use... We're going to strike with the shield. So we're going to do like a shield charge into the horse. Do it. You strike the muscular horse in the upper body from behind with your business bonds shield bruising the muscle. Okay, so we just gave it a little bit bruise. Sometimes we'll knock it over, though. So this horse is, like, really running away from the first original spot that we encountered it. So I'm going to head back over to that original spot. There's another horse somewhere over there. Yeah, you see that? So I'm going to get the dice back. Casually walk up to this horse that we hit earlier. Combat. Confirm. Strike. With our current throwing skill from what we started, I like to throw it like when I'm in, within... I don't know, like three or four tiles. Not too far away. Yeah, see we missed again. <laughs> oh, look at this. A bunch more horses. Excellent. So we just snuck up on this horse. Combat. Strike. Left front leg. Quick hack. Nice. An artery has been opened. You silently hack the stray horse. The front left leg from behind. Let's do another combat strike. Yeah, let's do the um, front hoof right here. We're not trying to kill the horse. We're trying to disable the horse. <laughs> combat strike um, so let's do the left front leg okay let's view the horse and then it's got heavy bleeding health ability to stand is somewhat impaired wounds Okay. We set our attack preferences earlier here to stand our ground, stand our ground, and um, strike without charging or wrestling, right? So I'm going to put away the sword and shield, and then just move with the arrow key into the horse here, and it says you silently punch the stray horse in the right leg from behind with your right hand, bruising the muscle. Silently punch the left hand, right hand, 
See, we're just punching the horse. It's not running away because we disabled it. And now we're just punching the horse. And we are going to just punch the horse to death. Just like this. Excellent. And now if I go to my character page here. You fork due to inebriation and satisfied improving tracking. If I go to the skills tab. Combat. Competent shield user. Competent armor. Novice axe. Adequate dodger. Adequate wrestler. And we're currently a novice striker and a dabbling fighter. Okay. Just going to hold down the button. Just like this. Chase it if it moves. It's not completely disabled. Oh, and we got it. Okay. Uh, satisfied improving fighting. Um, this one right here, combat. Confirm, strike. And we are going for, um, like, one of the legs. Right rear leg will do. Quick attack. Hack. See if we can get him again. Strike. Left rear leg, quick, hack, missed. Okay, so then we'll just move over, and now that one that we just attacked is right there, moving away from us. These two dumb horses are just chilling there, so we're going to attack one of those with a strike. Left front leg, quick, hack. This one, combat, confirm. I'm going to strike. Yeah, normally don't go for the, for the feet. Um, but since this is an easy strike and fairly solid, we're going to go for the right rear hoof. And, you know what, maybe we'll, we'll try a heavy attack here, even though it's slower. And hack it. Oh, nice. Excellent. We're going to go to a faster crawl. Okay, and then we're just going to circle around a little bit. And these dumb horses are going to return to, like, the same area. And uh, I'm going to try to just get close to him now. Yeah, I'm like in range of this one. So combat. Too tired to stand. Oh, okay. So I'm overexerted right now. Let me pull back a little bit. If we get on my status here, I'm overexerted. And that's because I left it on fast crawl. So we're going to go back to crawl here. move around a little bit and now I'm tired instead of overexerted. I, I don't want to do a weight um, with the sleep or weight action because then the horse is going to be gone. So I just kind of move the movement speed down. Now I'm healthy again, no longer tired. I should be a little bit more effective in combat. We put the shield and axe away and now we're just punching it. Okay, so we're just continuously punching. Just like we did with the other horse over here, and we're going to punch this one to death. And it's going to take a while to do it, but it's worth it. <laughs> Excellent. Just looks... It barfed all over the place. Yes. Those are those teeth. You silently punch the stray horse in the teeth from behind with your right hand, and the severed part sails off in an arc. Excellent. Okay, so it took me out of combat there for a second, so I'm going to go back in to attack this horse. This is a different horse we're attacking, uh, but we're just going to keep punching it as well. Excellent, we punched that horse to death. Um, let's attack this one now. Confirm. Yes. <laughs> Horse teeth go flying everywhere in all directions. We continue our punching, our horse boxing. The only way we can kill this horse by punching it. Oh, we just did. Okay, so that horse just died. Is it we gotta punch it in the lungs basically enough times to bruise both lungs or punch it in the head enough to damage the brain? Um, we might be able to also kill it if we punch it in the neck enough. And let's take a look at the horse. View it. Health. Bleeding, tired, wounds. So 
It's all messed up here. Heavy bruising in the... Everywhere. Oh, wow. This keeps going. <laughs> Alright, we're going to continue boxing. This is either worth seven or eight. Excellent. Punched it to death. Nice. I'm not really sure what happened there with the Z-level difference, but I was on the lower ramp and the horse was there, and it seemed like I was attacking, like, way faster than normal. Okay. I'm, I'm like, drunk right now. I'm euphoric due to inebriation. So I'm, like, stumbling around here drunk and... puking a little bit. Regain consciousness. Stand up. Oh yeah, I'm like falling over and stuff like that. Um, so, okay, so let's see if we can just rest here. Um, sleep for two hours. Slept in my own puke. <laughs> let's sleep until dawn. Enter. We almost caught up with that one. That's okay, we're just going to continue north, um, because I've been fighting those horses for a pretty long time, and I just want to continue north and see what else we can find. Um, but we did punch like seven of them to death or so, and if I go to the skills here, combat, we're now professional fighter, expert striker, talented armor user. Um, I think the rest of these were kind of the same, although we did get up in... Axe Dwarf to adequate. So we're continuing north. See, all this this large, long turkey leather shirt, all the large, whenever it has the large tag like that, it's, it's too big for dwarves. Oh, okay, so we, we finally drank, and so let's eat that sweet bread too. Excellent. And let's make sure that we're not... Yeah, see, we're sprinting right now. we got to move that back to walk. Every time I... Every time I um, like, I start to get tired and stuff like that. And I'm like, why am I getting so tired? And it's because I accidentally toggled on uh, sprint and forgot to toggle it off. We found their tavern. Um, that's the tavern keeper. And then we got a human poet right there. And then all these barrels of... Alcohol. Uh, we can take the whole barrel if we want. We can we can just fill our cup. So we filled our goblet. Uh, we can fill our water skin as well. Uh, we should be able to eat the term the the fisher berries. We should be able to eat the. Let's grab some fisher berries just to see. So let's grab uh, three of them. Okay. I still have food, but I, I want to just, you know, get see what we can see. So we're going to eat the fisher berries. Yeah, we can, you feel really full We eat the fisher berries. So let's get more of the fisher berries. Let's grab like uh, five of them. I have no idea how big they are. <laughs> oh, look at all this. I'm going to cut... Uh, Gem stockpile here. Large iron breastplate, too big for us. Yeah, old armor here is large, so too big. We're taking the turkey bone bracelet. And we're taking the ring. We're gonna wear the item. Excellent, we put on the, put on the bone bracelet and now let's put on the ring. Excellent. Very excellent. Content after putting on a finely crafted item. Content after putting on a well-crafted item. You see how, like, there's that 
marking right there. I can't fast travel past this point. So if I... That's like a site. It's a very small site. So it's like south and to the west of here. So go down south a little bit. I'm trying to find this site. Oh, there it is right there. The bag. Uh, top left. The bag right there. That's the site. Yeah, this is like the site of some ditched items here. Bronze Mall. I'm really only looking for a better shield. It has to be a full shield, though. Okay, so nothing really there. And it doesn't seem like there's any creatures around. So we're just going to continue west. Uh, once we get away from there, we should be able to fast travel again. Like, there's another one of those right here. But this up here should be temples. And hopefully there's dice. There's also temples to our south. I want to check out these ones first. So this is something. It could be a temple. Hopefully there's dice. Maybe. Looks like a scroll so far. Let's see what's in this room. Okay, no dice. Get captivated by the human. A scroll. Uh, let's see if we can even read that. So we picked it up. Find it in our inventory here. Read. You cannot read. Okay, we can't read. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to throw it then, right there. Can't travel until you leave this site. Okay. Oh, right, what is this? Is this on the map? No, it is not. Okay, so this is not on the map, but it is near that site. Um, we have a siltstone four-sided long die and a bronze statue. Let's take a look at the statue. The item is an image of Zahn Trust Knives, the dwarf in bronze. Uh, we are a worshipper of Inar. Yeah, if I go to the relations, Inar here is our deity. Okay, so if we put away our weapons and then move on to this tile and get the siltstone four-sided long die. We got it in our left hand, right? This dice and the dice that we brought are completely different in the way that the dice that I brought was created by mortals. And this dice is divine. So we're the four-sided long die with our weapons put away right now. Uh, we're gonna go to these three dots right here. And now we have the roll option. If, if we don't have the roll option, we're probably still holding something else, and we're going to roll. You roll, divining the will of Inar, according to the practice of the Cult of Diamond. The siltstone four-sided long die comes up with a word that cannot be read. You have been blessed with a week's good fortune. Excellent. Very excellent. We've been blessed with a week's good fortune. And now let's get the dice again. Okay. And maybe I suggest saving your game before you do this. And we're going to go back to this dice right here. And we're going to roll it again. Comes up with the same word, even though we... I guess we can't read. Whatever I did, we can't read. Um, you already know Inar's will. Do not tempt fate. However... We are going to tempt fate by rolling a third time. And we're going to see what happens. Roll. Hubris! You have been cursed to prowl the night in search of blood. Okay. <laughs> so now we are a vampire. We are now a vampire dwarf. And if I go to the character page here, uh, nothing really looks different yet. If I go to, like it says I'm tough, I'm strong, I'm agile, right? And if I go to health and then description, he's basically unbreakable, unbelievably strong, amazingly agile, and slow to tire. Becoming a vampire doubles or... Strength, agility, endurance, 
and our physical attributes such as endurance are still able to increase. We'll be able to feed on other creatures, all warm blood bearing bodies that I can't directly see should should show up as like a special character. I don't know if that's in the adventure mode beta or not, um, but I should be able to like sense living creatures even through walls. My thirsty indicator is gonna show up as red instead of blue. I can basically swim forever now and not have to worry about drowning. And we no longer have to sleep. Can stay in water indefinitely without drowning. Um, even to the point where we can swim across the ocean. Okay, so we got a, a Cody there. Yeah, we're not picking, we're not sensing him. So I don't know if the vampire senses in the adventure mode beta yet or not. Um, but we're continuing north. Oh, look at this. Yes, this is this is what we're looking for. Um, so we're in like kind of a haunted area right now as well. An osprey corpse, uh, albatross corpse. Uh, let's make sure we have our axe and shield out. Okay. And now what we're gonna do is start combat with this frail albatross corpse. Okay. We're going to strike. Uh, we're going to go for the right wing. Because we just want to... We just kind of want to tap it. So we're going to do a quick attack with our shield. And you see it hits us back. But it missed. Okay. The frail albatross corpse strikes. Um, but we block with our shield. Okay. That's the only one attacking us. So this one right here. That, that isn't in combat with us. We're going to initiate combat. In pretty much the same way, strike, right wing, quick attack, and um, hit it with the shield. So now we got two of them attacking and they're missing. Um, that's okay because they're going to start hitting soon. Combat, confirm, strike, right in the wing. Um, we'll just do a quick punch. Oh, the severed part sails off in an arc, okay. So these shield blocks is what we're looking for. Since we set our combat earlier to stand our ground and our charge defense as well to stand our ground, and we have the shield up, and also since we took competent shield user in the beginning of the game, we can do this, okay? So now we got a bunch of enemies attacking us, but they can't actually penetrate our superior defenses. So we're going to initiate combat with this one as well. Strike it in the wing. Uh, we just kind of want to initiate combat without really damaging it. So bronze. Bronze shield strike there, bruising the bone of the wing. And now that third one is on us. This one right here as well. Right wing. Quick attack and uh, shield strike. So now every time I move with the arrow keys, I'm getting like uh, a couple different attacks, right? Like I'm getting hit all those times. Albatross corpse strikes at you, but the shot is blocked by the shield. Blocked by the shield, blocked by the shield, blocked by the shield, all of these blocked by the shields. Okay. And basically, once I get, once I get a bunch of them on me right here, I'm no longer attacking, but I am going to, I am just going to kind of move around them. So I'm just, I tapped north on the arrow key there. All these attacks come in. Um, nothing gets through my defenses. Hit OK, and then move again. Oh, I move towards them. Okay, so move away. And you see, now they're surrounding us. And we're going to just continue to move around them for a while. So I'm just going to hold down the movement keys. To 
just like this and just kind of run from them. But maybe move the movement speed. Okay. Okay. Movement speed, uh, we'll do like a slow crawl. Done. And let's just take a look at our skills right now. Combat. We're going to be looking at armor user. So right now we're a talented armor user and a skilled shield user. Just a minute ago we were a competent shield user. So we already leveled up. And I'm just going to... I mean, a slow crawl. <laughs> and we're just fleeing. But we're fleeing so slow that they can... They can kid us, and we're in, now we're in a martial trance. <laughs> and we're just going to continue to let them attack us, and just kind of slowly make a very wide um, circle around them in our movement. So, because I don't want to get too far away from the original group in case we want to get more of them to fight us. <laughs> That's one move right there. Okay, okay, okay. So I'm just going to tap down on the arrow key once. And this is what happens. All these hits in. Excellent. 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 So three pages there. And now let's see our skills. Combat. So we're now adept at uh, shield user and armor user, and we're going to continue to train. It doesn't really take that long to do. We just want to constantly move like away from them. And if I scroll up in the layer here too, I think I have to wait for the combat to finish. Okay. If I scroll up in the layer here, if it that one right there is in like above us too, so they're like coming at us from different angles, not just on the ground here. Some of them are flying. But I always want to be moving away from them, and I'm going to just kind of come in a circle like that. And I want to give a shout-out to Bros of Stalin for developing Kisat Sodel Dur. Shield blocks everything. No mischance. Acts like a weapon. Fast attack. Uh, let's take it... Now, we made it up to the second tree here. So let's take a look at our skills. Combat. Legendary fighter, high master shield user, expert armor user, expert striker, proficient dodger, skilled observer. Uh, we're going to just keep going with it. Let's get as high as we want. Whenever we get bored, we can just kill them. Strike zones. The goal of Kisat Dor is not to kill, but to prevent the enemy from being able to cause more any more harm. Go for the lungs, gut, spine and throat, joints and eyes. Causes of death are blood loss, suffocation, brain injury, decapitation, and bisection. Legendary starts at 15, but can go all the way to 20. So that could be plus 3 legendary shield. We don't know. We could go to Ireland. Now that we're a vampire, we can traverse the sea, the ocean, by swimming it. Okay, a lot of misses here. Left martial trance. Um, let's take a look. Uh, no wounds. We're still good. Combat. Legendary fighter. Legendary shield user. Legendary armor user. High master dodger. Expert striker. Accomplished observer. Excellent. Very excellent. Uh, let's stand up. Combat. And uh, just kill these guys. Thank you very much for watching and subscribe for more videos.